Hello, I'm Alan Jay, and welcome to Lincoln Central with your third humongous trig tutorial. Eventually leading up to an appreciation of the different types of triangle, in this tutorial we are going to have a close look at angles around a point. How they all add up and the names given to angles depending on how big or small they are. So let's start with our angle from last time, angle AOB of size theta degrees. As you can see in our splendid rendition here, if we move point A anti-clockwise, it traces out a circle. Theta, the value of the angle, goes from 0 degrees through 90, 180, 270 and back to 0, a full 360 degrees. This will animate without using the mouse to move point A. Check this out. For those with an interest in GeoGebra, you might want to look at circle with center through point for this construction. You just select a center point as your rotation center, then click when the circle is of the required size. Oh, and to make the point on the circle move, just right click over it and choose animation on. You can also alter the speed of rotation under the algebra tab in object properties. In this animation, the speed is set to 0.2. By the way, just a reminder, I'll be including this construction on the Lincoln Central website, so you can play it online or download it. But remember, you must have GeoGebra installed on your computer for it to play. Here we are with the names of the quadrants added. Quadrants are just a fancy name for the four quarters of the circle. They are named anticlockwise as the first quadrant, 0 to 90 degrees, the second quadrant from 90 degrees to 180 degrees, the third quadrant from 180 degrees to 270 degrees, and finally the fourth quadrant from 270 degrees to 360 degrees. Okay. I want to talk about types of angle now, so let's start from zero again and increase theta. Now angles get their names in general terms from their size. An angle in the first quadrant, greater or equal to zero degrees, but less than 90 degrees, is called an acute angle. An angle of exactly 90 degrees is called a right angle. Angles in the second quadrant, greater than 90, but less than or equal to 180 degrees, are called obtuse angles. An angle of exactly 180 degrees is called a straight line or a straight angle. Any angle in either of the last two quadrants, greater than 180 degrees, but less than 360, is called a reflex angle. So to sum up, in one complete revolution of the point A, the value of theta varies in value from 0 to 360 degrees. In plain English we say that they are 360 degrees in a circle. Anyway, here is a, here is a summary for the names of angles and their range expressed in inequalities. First the acute angle greater or equal to 0, but less than 90 degrees, right angle, equal to 90 degrees, obtuse angle, greater than 90 degrees, but less than or equal to 180 degrees, a straight line, equal to 180 degrees, reflex angle, greater than 180 degrees, but less than 360 degrees. Now there is a way of naming groups of angles around a point by how many degrees they add up to. I want to introduce you to the words complementary and supplementary. Complementary angles are adjacent angles. That means they sit next to each other like buddies and they add up to 90 degrees. In the diagram, if angle AOC is a right angle, then we say that angle AOB and angle BOC are complementary to each other. Angle AOC equals angle AOB plus angle BOC, 
which equals 90 degrees. On the, on the other hand, supplementary angles, which are also adjacent angles, these guys add up to 180 degrees, a straight line. In our diagram, if XOY is a straight line, then we say that angle XOZ and angle ZOY are supplementary to each other. Together, they add up to 180 degrees. XOY equals angle XOZ plus angle ZOY, which equals 180 degrees. OK, we're still on a roll here. Let's look at angles around a point. Remember, they all add up to 360 degrees. In our example, we have four angles at a point. Let's try to do this in our head and find the missing angle. Add in the three given angles, 100 plus 35 plus 60, we get 195 degrees. So you must ask yourself, what do you add to 195 degrees to make 360 degrees? To find that, you must take the 195 from the 360, right? So the missing angle is 165 degrees. Let me tell you, it's much easier doing it in, in algebra, especially for more complicated problems. Well, I hope this has helped you out. Thanks again for watching this tutorial. The next tutorial is on triangle internal angles, where I'll be introducing a little bit of algebra for you. This will be really simple, just to get you started. Anyway, moustache or the fish to fry. Hope to see you there. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. You don't want to miss the latest vid. See you soon.